So here we have a Formula One car designed for better overtaking. So let's have a look in a bit more detail at the two key facets that have been changed on this car that should help overtaking. First of all, you've got the wake of the car. And then secondly, you've got the aerodynamic devices on the following car that get upset by that wake. So let's have a look at the effect and what's been changed on this car to change that. First, let's look at wake. Now wake is the disturbed airflow that follows the car as it goes along the street. So this is caused both by the shape of the car, but in particular by the spinning tires and the aerodynamic surfaces. So let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. Most of this comes from the front tires. The spinning tires create a lot of turbulence that wants to get sucked back into the car. Teams then do lots of work with their aerodynamics to try and push the wake of the tire away from the back of the car. And in the new regulations, they're working with two key areas to try and prevent this. First of all is the fairings that are going on the wheels. And then secondly, this reshaped brake duct around the front. And we can have a look at these in a bit more detail in this view. So first of all now, you can see the brake ducts go much higher and loop over the top of the car. What this is doing is trying to prevent the airflow separation behind the tyre that creates so much of the turbulence. And by having this fin, it just tries to prevent that separation happening a little bit earlier uh, in order to reduce this turbulent wake. Equally, the brake duct goes much further down and picks up the airflow squirting out the sides of the tyres with a lower section here, again, trying to reduce the wake of the car, but also at the same time trying to reduce some of the aerodynamic tricks that teams have been using to try and offset this. So you end up with a much smoother airflow going around at the back of the car. And then secondly, we need to look at how the car is now going to work much better in the wake. The way they're going to change how the car works better in weight to keep creating downforce despite you know, the minimal dirty air but it will still be running in dirty air is twofold. First of all now most of the downforce is going to be produced by the underfloor of the car. Now for many years we've talked about the floor and a diffuser. This is almost going back to the late 70s early 80s when what we call ground effect and you know, Formula One still working ground effect but it's not like the wing cars that we used to have in the old days with skirts. So now you have a shaped underfloor that starts here, ramps down in order to get lots of air under the floor, accelerates along a flat section and then it's diffused at the rear section here aided by a new beam wing added at the bottom of the rear wing. So now you've got much more downforce being produced by the underfloor. Another problem that drivers get when following in the wake of another car is understeer where the front wing isn't working as well. And there's two uh, changes that are really going to help the drivers with this. First of all, the underfloor is a lot less sensitive to the wake of uh, another car. But secondly, they've lifted the front wing up and this has two effects. First of all, it makes the wing lift up off the ground, which makes it less sensitive to moving around in dirty air, but also allows a lot more air to come under the car to feed the underfloor to create yet more downforce. So now, with less wake and with a better way of producing downforce, cars should be able to follow much more closely through the race and, we hope, have much more overtaking.